Mr. Harish. Welcome to U.S. History Cause and Effect. Today we will focus on the Great War. The war to end all wars, but obviously it didn't do that. World War One. Sure, it was a world war, and this is U.S. history, and you could argue that the U.S. only played like the fourth or fifth most important role of all the countries in the war itself. But in the big picture of U.S. history, there is so much more to the story than that. So let's get going. So the immediate cause of World War I itself was that European countries had made a bunch of alliances with each other, and Archduke Franz Ferdinand of the Austro-Hungarian Empire was assassinated while he was visiting Bosnia. The assassination caused Austria-Hungary to declare war on the Kingdom of Serbia. Because of their alliance with Serbia, Russia jumped in to defend them, and yada yada yada, almost all of Europe was now involved in a war. Notice, the United States wasn't in any of those alliances and didn't join the war in 1914. But we are looking at causes of U.S. involvement, so the war starting is itself cause number one of the U.S. joining. You can't join a war that doesn't exist. So there you have it, cause number one, the war started itself. Cause number two is that the majority of the U.S. population had European ancestry, so several old loyalties came into play. Some people supported the Allies because of their British or French background, and lots of German immigrants were pulling for the Central Powers. The U.S. stayed neutral right away, partly because they had people pulling for both sides, but they wouldn't be able to ignore the people's ancestry forever. Cause number three gets a little sticky. A British passenger ship called the Lusitania was sunk off the coast of Ireland in 1915 by a German U-boat. A U-boat's like a submarine. 128 Americans died in the attack. The Germans were trying to stop Allied supplies from reaching mainland Europe, but the Americans were now upset that their civilians were killed on a civilian ship. German U-boats actually followed a version of restricted submarine warfare where they needed to surface and allow transport ships to get their crews to a place of safety before sinking the ship itself. What makes this scenario especially difficult is that there is a very real possibility that the Lusitania was carrying weapons to Europe to supply the Allies. Perhaps the Germans had reason to sink it, but either way, anti-German feelings grew among the general public in the United States, and it only expanded further in 1916, bringing us to cause number four. Cause number four is the Zimmerman Telegram, a message sent from Germany to Mexico proposing they join together in an alliance if the U.S. were to eventually enter the war. See, Mexico had lost lots of land to the U.S. over the last century, so Germany's thought was that Mexico might be eager to get it back. Mexico could keep the U.S. occupied at home and therefore leave them unable to send troops over to Europe. The British intercepted the message, told the United States, and needless to say, it pushed the U.S. even closer to entering the war on the side of the Allies. In order to understand the fifth and final, yes, I promise there are only five, major cause of the U.S. entering the war, you have to remember that German U-boats had been operating under the rules of restricted warfare, like we talked about before. By 1917, the Germans went back to unrestricted submarine warfare, meaning the U-boats could sink transport ships without warning. This change and the subsequent sinking of a U.S. transport ship, <laughs> subsequent, get it, like, like we're talking about submarine warfare, subsequent. Mr. Cheesy Jokes, Mr. Cheesy Jokes, Cheesy Jokes. <laughs> so the U.S. officially declared war on Germany after that, the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back, unrestricted submarine warfare. So the U.S. joined the war. That's the event we're talking about as the focal point of the video, right? You saw the causes for them joining, now what are the biggest effects? Effect number one is probably the Allies winning the war itself. The situation in early 1917 was not good for the Allies, especially since Russia had just left the war due to their own revolution at home. The U.S. entering gave enough momentum to the Allies for them to win the war by November 1918. Effect number two is the Treaty of Versailles, the official treaty to end the war, which was signed in 1919. The U.S. was one of the major creators of the treaty, 
but were focused largely on the goal of creating something called a League of Nations, where countries would talk about their problems without going to war. In order to get the League of Nations written into the treaty, they had to allow some harsh terms put down by Britain and France, who were looking to punish Germany. The Treaty of Versailles is also important because many historians agree it was so harsh that it helped bring the Nazis to power in Germany, which also indirectly led to World War II. So effects number one and number two deal more with Europe, but what about the effects of the war on the United States directly? Effect number three of U.S. involvement in World War I is a change in the role the U.S. was expected to play globally. Before 1914, Europe was basically the center of world affairs. The biggest powers were in Europe and the largest economies were in Europe. The status of the U.S. as a world power had grown a little by the start of the 1900s because they had gained their own colonies and the growth of the U.S. economy at that time. However, stepping into World War I, Fighting on behalf of freedom for all countries to determine their own governments put the U.S. in the role of world policemen out to protect anyone whose rights and freedoms were being threatened. They were reluctant to take this role at first, but their entrance in World War I is often seen as the start of what many historians have called the American Century, a time period of political, economic, and cultural dominance by the U.S. The British had had that role from 1814 to 1914, but the U.S. joining in World War I is apparently what kicked off the American century. As a result, the Allies won the war and were able to shape the peace in the aftermath, which actually led to more war. It also led to the greatest period of American prosperity in its history, a time when the U.S. truly held a global leadership position and made them a country the rest of the world looked to for guidance. Join us next time when we talk about the Great Depression. Until next time, buh bye Wait a second! Does anyone realize what's happening here? Okay, 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 okay. So, those that don't know history are doomed to repeat it, right? Well, the British century was 1814 to 1914. Essentially from the end of the Napoleonic Wars, which left them as the clear world power over France, until the start of World War I. Then we said the U.S. jumped into World War I in 1917, kicking off the American century, right? Century. 100 years. 1917 plus 100. Carry the four. Divide. That's the world. That's the 2017! This country is about to fade into oblivion, out of the limelight, no longer the leading power in the world. Who will take our place? Finland? Djibouti? I guess we will have to wait and see. One, twenty-one guns, lay down your arms, and give up the fight. Production assistance provided by Sethy Silvis and Jenna Mosley. And sometimes Nate Pisani, but not really. Effect number one is probably the. Wait, wait, wait. There's more. You know, like when I punched my hand? Yeah. That, like, that really hurt. I could probably give myself a bruise. Okay. So there you have it. The U.S. was reluctant to join World War I, but through their own ancestry, naval warfare they didn't agree with, and an attempted alliance plot against them, they threw themselves into the fray. As a result, the Allies won the war and were able to shape the peace in the aftermath, which actually led to more and more. More and more. Which, I can't say that word.